Right, so substitution method. This one's already set up beautifully, isn't it? Yeah. So I say let y equal 3x plus 4 in equation 2. And I make sure I've labelled my equation somewhere so that it's easy for your maths teacher to follow your working because that's what you want to do. Yeah. Oh, did I miss five? Oh, well, I've started this one. I'll go back to five now. I just accidentally scrolled too far. Thank you. It's very helpful. It's fun to mix it up and just change it up a bit. Now that I've started, I'm going to do this one first. So I've got 3x plus 4, replacing y with 3x plus 4, equals 2x plus 10. Get my x's together. I've got more on the left, so I subtract the 2x from the right from each side. Get rid of the 4 from the left-hand side. I need to subtract it, so I do it from the other side. All of that work reduces really nicely. 2x equals 6. Now I can just say, let x equals 6 in. I'm going to go for equation 2. You could just as easily do it in equation 1. Y is going to be 2 times 6 plus 10. 12 and 10 is 22. Check the other side, 3, 6 is 18, plus 4 is 22, you know you got it right. And you can write a nice little thing, therefore the solution is 6, 22, or you could write x equals 6 and y equals 22, or something like that, and you'd be done. Alright, back to question 5, because I was, oh, wait, have a look at it, sorry, yeah, I get excited doing maths and I rush ahead. You find yourselves doing that at night, doing your maths, getting excited and just rushing, and then suddenly it's 1.30 in the morning. I should be in bed, but maths is so much fun. It does happen. I wanted to do some of these transposing, so I'm glad I was reminded to go back and do this. Transposing equations or making something the subject is exactly the same as solving. You just do inverse operations till you get the thing on its own. So on the, I want to get x in this first one. What's got the least to do with the x? The a, the b, or the c? The c, it's not even up the top with it, is it? It's down the bottom in the denominator. So the first thing I do is I say, well, the opposite of dividing by c is to multiply by c, and I multiply each side by c, and that gives me dc equals a plus bx. What would I get rid of next, Tommy G? Would I get rid of the A or the B next? Of course the A, good man, because it's got less to do with it, doesn't it? So I subtract A from each side, and I've got DC minus A equals BX. Exactly right. Then I want to get rid of that B, so I divide by B. Correct. And I can't do anything else with that. I just leave it like that. DC minus A divided by B. That is what X is equal to. And I'm done. This time they're trying to be fancy sticking in pi. Pi is actually just another letter, so it works just the same as all the others. And it's no harder. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that 2 pi. What's the opposite of multiplying by 2 pi? Dividing by 2 pi. So when I do that to each side, I've got t divided by 2 pi equals the square root of L over G. What's the opposite of finding the square root of something? Yeah, squaring. Squaring is the opposite of finding the square root. So now, in my next step, I just square each side. Now that's not usually a good practice to do in maths, but we won't worry about why that is for the moment. Now you can either square each of the individual bits, or you can just leave it all in brackets squared. It would still be correct. So to minimise your chance of making an error, you could just leave it like that. And that equals L divided by G. Do I want to have G on the bottom? 
I'm trying to make G the subject, but it's on the bottom of a fraction at the moment. Do I want that? What can I do to move it from the bottom? Times by G. Because remember, multiplying will get rid of dividing. And it's really interesting. It's going to disappear from this left-hand side because when I divide by G and multiply by G, they cancel out, don't they? They go to 1s. But I end up with G multiplied by that T over 2 pi all squared on the left. So now, to get G on its own, I divide by T over 2 pi all squared. At this stage, I would mark that correct for you guys. That would be fine. But, seeing as though you are amazing, we could do something else. Yes, question. That's a division sign. It looked a bit messy, sorry. Does it look like a division sign now, sort of? Yeah. So, we don't usually like writing division signs, do we? So, we could write it as L over t on 2 pi all squared, but then we've got a fraction within a fraction, which we don't like either, so both of them are yucky. What do we know division is the same as, though? Multiplication by the reciprocal. So we can easily say this is the same as L multiplied by 2 pi over t all squared. And so we can have g equals that. And that might be an easier form to work with. They may have expanded the brackets if they wanted to and squared everything. If you did that, so, so this would be right, that would be right. It may be easier for some people to think about it. If I squared each of those terms, 2 squared is 4. Pi squared is pi squared. And I've still got an L on the top over, and I'd have T squared on the bottom. You could do it that way as well. And that would be right. They're all equivalent expressions. I will mark you correct whichever way you write it out of those three. I'd be happy. Is that okay? Mostly? Yeah. Oh, they've given us some yucky simultaneous equations here. Why are they yucky? What's wrong with that first one? bit ugly. No one has a problem with it. It's a little bit ugly because it's got a denominator in it. This makes it a little bit more tricky. But you can see, if I do the substitution, the coefficient of x on the other side is 4. It's going to cancel out, so it'll be OK. So I'm still going to say, let y equal x over 2 plus 3. I'm going to substitute that into equation 2. So x over 2 plus 3 equals 4x take 10. Still don't really like that denominator. What can we do to get rid of that dividing by 2? Yeah, let's multiply everything by 2. So remember, that's a good trick to get rid of fractions if they're going to bother us. We can do it without doing that. You can go 4x minus half of x is 3.5x or 7x over 2. But that tends to confuse people. If I just multiply everything by 2, most people are happy. So that, that's going to be x plus 6 equals 8x minus 20. Now that looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? So now we can go ahead. I'm going to move all my x's to the right-hand side because I've got more of them over there. So that will keep them positive which means this negative 20 I want to get rid of. I'm going to add 20. Now on the left I've got 26, and on the right-hand side I have 7x. What am I going to do as my last step? Divide by 7 to get x on its own. x equals 26 over 7 divided by 7. And we're done. Are we finished, though? No, Got to find y as well, don't we? Looks pretty ugly, that expression. But I'm going to have to keep working up here. Let x equal 26 divided by 7. 
I'm going to go for equation 2. Four times twenty six over seven minus ten. Four twenty six is a one hundred and four over seven. Ten is the same as seventy over seven, isn't it? So we get y equals thirty four over seven. That's a pretty nasty one. You won't get one with numbers that nasty, I wouldn't imagine. Maybe you will. Like the last question to be really cruel. But it's not so bad. The next two say to use the method of elimination. I might do that in our own time if you're interested because you're going to get that in the assignment that's coming up and you don't need to worry about it for your tests. So. I'm not sure. Maybe. Um, but I might go and fill them in a little bit later. And then we've only got part C to go, so I might stop there and then just do... We've we got time for one more. What time's this lesson at? 11.50. We can probably do part C. 11.40. 10 minutes. We'll see if we can get it done.